All right, joining me now, House Republican leader Kevin McCarthy, the best of the best, the leader of the cavalry, as I have um, anointed him. Thank you, Kevin, coming on set. It's fantastic. Thank you. I always appreciate the opportunity to talk with you. Right, I'm, well. I miss you. <laughs> I loved when we worked together. <laughs> yes, likewise. It's terrific stuff. All right, one question I, I want you to uh, take a run at. Um, people are dividing up on this after the Supremes on Friday. Is this going to be a row election, which is what Biden is suggesting, or is this going to be an inflation, recession, gas price election, and all the other failures of the Biden administration? What's your thinking? Well, look, my, my first take is life is precious. But the one thing that the Supreme Court did was it didn't take um, abortion away. It moved the debate to the states. Mm. And so that's where the debate's going to go. But we haven't had inflation like this in 40 years. This is, this is a 1980 election, but compounded with crime, with border, with uh, parents not being able to go to their kids' school to have a say, this is unlike we've ever seen before. And look, don't take my word for it. New data just came out today that 1.7 million people have changed party registration. Mm -hmm. Two thirds of those switched to Republican. Mm -hmm. And then a real, a real canary in the coal mine for the Democrats is Myra Flores' election. Mm -hmm. The second most Hispanic seat in the entire nation, 84% 84, 84 Hispanic. Biden won it by 13 points just in a year and a half ago. Um, Republicans haven't held this seat in more than a century. It was elected in the primary, not the general. She's the first Mexican-born woman ever to serve in Congress, and she's a Republican. That should be the wake-up call. So, of course, Biden doesn't want to talk about gas prices. He doesn't want to talk about Fourth of July. It's going to cost you 17 percent more, according to the Farm Bureau. He was touting last year, remember, I saved you two cents or something. Can't say it. He doesn't want people to talk about what's happening at the border, because now every community is a border community. The number one killer of Americans between the ages of 18 and 45 is fentanyl. Ah, and right. that's a direct correlation right. to what's happened at this border. That's where it's coming. You know, it's an aside. I, I just want to mention, in Bill Barr's book, former Attorney General, yes. Bill Barr, he has a whole section on fentanyl and the Mexican problem and the border problem. And for another segment, but it's an unbelievable problem getting worse and getting worse under Biden, and people are furious at that. Um, so you, you think it will not be a row. Look. Democrats looking for a distraction. That's what it looks yes. like to me. It is. Now, will it give greater intensity for some Democrats to turn out who weren't before? Yes. Will it play maybe into a governor's race? It very well could. Would it play in certain cities? But is New York and California going to be different? Mm. No. And the thing that's going to happen here is America's going to see how radical the Democrats are when it comes to abortion. They want to go up to the moment of birth. America's not there. America doesn't believe in this. And for every performer who says he's going to leave America and go to Europe, he's going to get a wake-up call. Because in Europe, they don't allow an abortion after 13 or 15 weeks. Remember, there are only seven countries in the world that are so radical that allow you to have abortion up to birth. And three of those are America, China, and North Korea. Mm, wow. Well, it's bad but that's company. the democratic policy. That's what they. Every that's this bill, women's health, blah they, blah blah. They blah. voted for it in the Congress today. Every single Democrat voted for that. Right, and it would right up to the end. Up to maybe, the birth. Maybe yes. even after birth. I mean, yes. Partial birth abortion. They're for that. That's not where this country is. No. This country is actually pretty. I mean, you look at the polling. It's about where Mississippi is. Fifteen weeks or so. And you know what? It's going to happen. The Supreme Court has a responsibility to look something constitutionally. And so now they send it down to the states, and the states can have that debate. Do you see, let's go to the real meat and potatoes of the election. Is Joe Biden providing any explanations, taking uh, burdens, uh, new ideas for beating inflation? We still have $5 gasoline and so forth and so on. We just had a segment, Kevin Hassett and I were talking, United Airline pilots, 14.5% wage increase. This looks like a 1970s wage price viral. Yes. What's Mr. Biden doing to stop that? He's doing nothing. He's driving this. He's pushing us into a recession because wages can't keep up w with inflation. And what did the first thing he do? From the very first day he went in, he attacked energy. That's one of the number one drivers to inflation. Costs everybody more money. Transportation and others. And look what he made the mistake of how he dealt with Ukraine. He proposed, instead of sending them weapons to defend themselves, he said there'd be sanctions. And all he did was give China and India an advantage because they're getting a discount now on Russian oil. oil yeah. And Russia's still being able to pay for their war. And we're sitting here 
his actions are poor. And then remember when he paid people to stay home instead of go back to work? What did that do to every small business? What did that do to people going back and you had to raise the wages? Mm -hmm. But just the battle that he's gone on energy and the battle that he's done. Remember what he promised. You know, look in my, uh, read my lips, look in my face. I'm going to take care of the petroleum businesses. They're going to be out. And now he tries to blame them. He wouldn't even show up for the meeting. No, I mean, it, it, it was, was a bait in the and White switch. House. It was he, a bait and switch. Look, you work there. You know exactly. He stuck them in the energy department, which is a horrible building. I call it a 1970s public housing building, with uh, Granholm, the underboss. Meanwhile, he shows up in the Roosevelt Room, which is a beautiful historic with a card room, telling him in when the to White sit House, down. with a card telling him what to do to talk to the windmill makers. So to me, that said it all. There isn't going to be any change. I mean, you know, you remember Harold Ford, who was a House member from Tennessee. Yeah. Okay. Harold, Democrat, great guy, great yeah. friend of mine, wrote a spectacular piece in the journal. I guess it was Friday or Thursday. All Biden has to do is pull back a bit on some of these restrictions and regulations, and we would have more oil and gas, and exactly. we'd have lower prices, but he won't do it. He's Kevin. gone after the, the banks for the capital not to lend to right. him. He's gone after the property, the leases, so you, couldn't, so you can't produce it. Then he's gone after the infrastructure. Look, we are, we are Saudi Arabia of natural gas, mm. but you know what? You can't, you're not getting more rigs in Pennsylvania. Why? Because they don't have the pipelines to send it. And what will he do? He'll get on his plane. He'll fly for 15 hours to go to Saudi Arabia instead of going down to Midland and talking to Americans. He'd create more American jobs. Your gas price would get lower. And it doesn't just go into your tank, right? It goes into the buttons in your shirt. It goes into yeah. your phone. It goes into the Food, ink. Fertilizer. Everything. But it costs everything that you're going to move. That would combat inflation. That's why I want to have a debate. I want to have a contrast in this next election. We're going to roll out what people would believe is a contract with America, but we're going to call it a commitment to America. Mm -hmm. we're, going to, we're going to promise we'll make, we'll make America energy independent. Mm -hmm. We'll pass it out of the House. We will secure our borders. We'll make our streets safe again. You, you look at what happens each and every day. You hear what's happening being pushed onto the subways here kids and in going into their schools. We'll make a parent's bill of rights that parents have a say in their kids' education. Just these fundamental items. We'll make sure those tax cuts that made us so strong, you won't have to worry about that anymore. Because remember, Article 1, Section 7 of the Constitution, all tax reform starts in the House. Mm -hmm. We'll make those permanent. The regulations that he's gone after, that has increased inflation. Here's these businesses trying to survive after a pandemic. Now they got to pay more because of what he's done on the salaries. And then the regulations on top of that? That all goes down to the consumer. How about my, this is one of my favorites. We were talking about it with Mike Lee earlier in the show. Um, the Security Exchange Commission has become the Security oh. Environmental Co Commission. You right? can't. It's a couple thousand pages. It's environmental screed. No company could possibly meet it. It's a trial lawyer's bonanza. It's a dream. It's, everyone's it's not a, they have no constitutional authority. They have no judicial. They have, I'm sorry. They have no legislative authority no. to do this. We have a separation of branches <laughs> of government. But what he's doing, this SEC could be the biggest long-term damage there is. Mm -hmm. They're saying not only your business you have to rate it, who you do business with in some other country or something else. You can't score that, but everyone's going to get sued over it. What do you think that's going to cost? What do you think the regulations for there? And it's going to make us less competitive against China. This is the problem with this administration. They have no solutions. We're going to lay out solutions if they trust us to take the majority. And look at what just the facts that came out. 58% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. Mm. That's an increase from last May. Mm. That's about 150 million adults trying to survive. But every time they go to the grocery store, it costs them more. Every time they go to the gas station, it costs them more. Every time they turn on their TV, their cable is going to cost more. The water costs more. And you know what? A cooling or heating the house is going to cost more. You're going to get an increase from the moment you wake up till you go to bed at night. And it's all based upon the Democratic policies. And then if you want to walk the streets, you don't feel safe because they wanted to defund the police. And now they don't keep anybody in jail anymore. They let them off on bail. And then they elect these DAs that won't hold anybody accountable. There needs to be consequences for these people's action. And the number one thing to do is in 134 days, vote them out and let's reset the stage. You know, we're going to have the one-year anniversary of our original July 4th special a year ago. Yeah. It is astonishing to me, Kevin, how things have gone downhill so fast in just the last year. Astonishing to me. And I think that's the real election issue. 
That's the real election. We're going right up to 5 p.m. Right up where we all turn. <laughs> Kevin McCarthy, you have been great to us. We Thank welcome you. you back.